Hi there everybody, in this video we're looking at gene control in prokaryotes. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure we understand the difference between these two kinds of genes, structural genes and regulatory genes. So let's say we have a length of DNA and there's a section of that DNA, a gene, which we're going to call a structural gene. Now when that gene undergoes transcription, so when it's transcribed, that structural gene will produce, after the processes of translation, it will produce a structural protein. So this means a protein which is used by the cell. So it's either going to be something which actually forms part of the cell structure itself, or it could be some sort of metabolic protein, such as an enzyme. Now, if you've got um, a protein being produced, it takes energy and it takes material to produce this protein. So whenever transcription takes place, that, take, that uses material and energy. Cells don't want to be using material and energy if they don't need to. So if this structural protein is not needed, the cell does not want to be transcribing this structural gene. So genes can be turned off and they can be turned on. So if a gene is expressed, then that means the gene is turned on. But if we turn the gene off, then that gene is no longer expressed and the protein will not be produced. So the way that the cell does this is by using something called a repressor protein, which is this uh, purple bit here. So when the repressor protein binds to the DNA, and it binds, as you can see, just above where the structural gene is. When that happens, transcription doesn't take place and therefore our structural protein is not produced. Now a repressor protein is linked to a regulatory gene. So when a regulatory gene is transcribed, the product of that will be our repressor protein. And then the repressor protein is able to bind to the DNA. Now whether or not it binds is determined by different things and we're going to look at that in another video. Important to note that the site of the regulatory gene and the structural gene, it's on the same length of DNA of course, they're just not perfectly next to each other. So the regulatory gene will be a little bit of a distance away from where you find the structural gene. Okay, so structural genes produce genes which are um, involved in the structure or the metabolism of the cell, and regulatory genes will produce proteins which are involved in controlling whether or not those structural genes are transcribed or not. Okay, so we now need to look at two different kinds of enzymes. So remember, um, enzymes could be the product of our, um, the transcription process, so if we again take our length of DNA, which contains a structural gene, transcription of that structural gene will result, result eventually in our structural protein. And we've said before that that structural protein can be enzymes. So we're specifically looking here at structural proteins, which are enzymes. And let's just make it look a bit like an enzyme. There we go. So here's our enzyme and there's our active site. So, we know that we're wanting to be able to control whether or not this enzyme is produced, so we owe that the cell will only want to produce that enzyme if it's actually needed. And let's first of all look at inducible enzymes. So inducible enzymes, uh, we have here our repressor protein, and the repressor protein at the moment is bound to the DNA, which means that transcription of that structural gene will not take place. The default state of an inducible enzyme is off. So that means that the gene coding for that inducible enzyme, the default state is that it is not transcribed. So normally, in a normal situation, that enzyme, the inducible enzyme, is not produced by the cell because the repressive protein 
is usually bound to the DNA. Now, if you have a situation where the substrate for that enzyme is present in the environment, which means that the cell needs the enzyme because it wants to use the enzyme to break down the substrate, then we, we want to be producing our enzyme. So the substrate, so here's our substrate, is now present in the environment. It wasn't present before, but it is present now. This substrate is able to bind to our repressor protein. And when that happens, it causes a change um, in the, the shape of the repressor protein. And it means that the repressor protein is no longer able to bind. So the presence of the substrate in the environment causes the repressor protein to detach from the DNA. That means that transcription is now able to take place because the repressor protein is no longer bound. So we produce our structural enzyme. So this is our inducible structural enzyme. And that means that the cell is making the enzyme and the enzyme is therefore able to bind to the substrate and break it down. So this is a way for the cell to be able to use the substrate. It produces the enzyme to be able to break down the substrate, but it only does that when the substrate is present. Okay, now the second um, type of enzyme, the pressable enzyme, is kind of just the opposite, really. The default state is on. So again, here's our DNA, here's our structural gene. It's a different structural gene because it's going to be coding for a different enzyme. And the normal state in the cell will be that our repressor protein is not bound to the DNA. That means that transcription takes place. And it means that our enzyme, our repressible enzyme is produced. Now, if there is a substance present, now this is not the substrate. It is a small molecule, sometimes called an effector molecule. It will probably have something to do with our enzyme here. It could be the product of the enzyme controlled reaction. But the important thing is this is not the substrate of the enzyme that was produced. So there is some kind of molecule which is present in the environment. And when that molecule is present, it binds to the repressor protein, which causes a change in the shape of the repressor protein which means the repressor protein binds to the DNA. So now it's bound, transcription cannot take place, and the enzyme is not produced. So the structural gene is no longer being expressed. So if we summarize that, what we're saying is, in an inducible enzyme, the presence of the substrate induces transcription. It causes transcription to happen presence of the substrate, transcription happens, we end up with our enzyme. If there is no substrate, there is no transcription, there is no enzyme. With the repressible enzyme, the presence of a small molecule, as this particular small molecule, will repress or prevent transcription. So when the molecule is present, the repressor protein binds and the structural gene is not transcribed. If this molecule is not present, the repressor protein doesn't bind and we do get our enzyme being produced. Okay, that's all. Go back, have another look because it can be a little bit tricky. Um, and then we will use these ideas in another video where we look at a specific example of this, um, of inducible enzymes, which is the lac operon.